Today, instead of the regular how to win type of guide, we'll be taking a look at how to lose more graciously or turn unfavorable lanes into more even lanes. I'll be breaking down 5 of my own most common mid lane mistakes and outline how to fix them. As always, the video will be shown from Storm's POV, but the content is absolutely applicable to most mid heroes. Let's begin. Number 1. Understanding the game state at minute 0. This one is easiest to fix as it doesn't require any special mid lane skills, just simple awareness of the concept. Let me explain. On an absolutely average match, both teams will have 3 bounties picked up and the creeps will meet somewhat in the middle. But add one variable to this equation and the lane has the potential to turn out completely different. If you've messed up your block, now the enemy will potentially trade better than you and have easier time securing and denying creeps. Furthermore, the next wave might again meet in the same bad spot, deepening your disadvantage even more. You will have to either travel uphill to help push the lane, take an extra damage, or sit further down low ground, losing out on potential farm. Either way, the resource cost is greater and whatever item timing you had in mind will be delayed. This is further amplified or reduced by the bounty rune difference. So, if any of these variables turn out not in your favor, be extra mindful of the current region you have and be ready to send out more if the opponent senses the advantage and plays extra aggressive. Instead of waiting for a bottle, grab a salve and ship it out. If you're stuck low ground for a prolonged amount of time, don't be afraid to ship out a second self too, versus heroes who can easily stack damage, such as Queen of Pain, Shadow Friend, Invoker or Viper. So, to summarize this point, if your block is bad, if the enemy got more bounties, be ready to ship out more region than previously anticipated. Let's move on to point number 2. Taking unnecessary damage. This is best visualized when laning vs Shadow Friend. Someone at Valve thought that his laning is weak, so they recently reduced Ray's mana cost. Naturally, SF will spend every second thinking how to best stack races on you. There are two ways to mitigate this problem. First one is to simply keep distance and sacrifice some last hits, but never take more than two race stacks. If you get too greedy, it is very easy for SF to nuke you down. An even better solution, and how you can win mid versus SFs, is to force them to choose between securing a creep and harassing. If he cannot do both, he will either lose out on some hero damage or the last hit itself. And with either race on cooldown, he can no longer efficiently combo, allowing you to retaliate in any way your hero can. This is applicable for any opposing hero with long range spells like Lina, Leshrag, Zeus, Puck, VR, etc. If you do not force the opponent to choose between creep and you, you will take unnecessary damage. Point 3. Relying on the minute 4 runes. Let's say you had a nice battle timing, you've pressured the enemy mid, now you're running low on resources, but the rune time is coming up. You've pushed the wave in and the enemy mid is currently stuck under tower. You sit by the middle of the river, region rune spawns top, you take it lane 1. This is the ideal scenario. Ideal scenario will only happen in 1 out of 10 games. Realistically, the enemy pushed 2, or the way was fortified, or the enemy threatens a kill on you if you walk out for the rune, or the enemy simply has better mobility, or they have their support guarding a rune spot, or simply the rune spawns on the opposite side of where you are. That's way too many variables for you to rely on the rune to give you lane advantage. The worst thing that can happen is you being stuck under tower with minimal HP, unable to approach the wave, waiting for a self while the enemy continues to pressure. Simply being mindful of own HP at all times, regardless of potential rune or not, will help avoid overcommitting and, should the rune pickup fail, you'll have enough resources to maintain laning while additional region is being sent out. The only time where you can and should commit to aggression before rune timer is when your own support is able to hold one rune side while you pin the enemy under tower and go for the other. But even that is risky. Point 4. Staying in the lane when resource cost is greater than potential gain. Let's again use SF as an example. By level 5, his race combo deals a ton of damage and simply staying near the creeps is risking great health loss and should any enemy rotation happen, certain death. 
This is also true for even matchups where you have died before, any initially unfavorable matchup, or when the enemy gains skill potential by a certain level, such as Invoker's Meteor combo. If staying in the lane means you need to check selves constantly, then staying in the lane is probably not the best idea. If you're playing a hero capable of flash farming, leaving the lane at level 4 to jungle is probably best. Hero that cannot flash farm as well could also safely soak XP until level 5, then do the same thing. As long as you reach level 6 safely, you're still in a good spot and many heroes can return back to lane or begin conquering sides. Point 5. Not recognizing when it's a kill lane, when it's a farm lane and when to switch between one or the other. On paper, it is easy to decide whether you'll want to just rotate lane to jungle or try to take over and feed on the opponent. For example, Storm vs Zeus. Reach level 6, keep killing on cooldown. Seems simple enough. Likewise, a Storm facing Queen of Pain can forget about making a kill anytime soon. But just like all of the points we've highlighted before, there are variables that come into play and one must be able to recognize and take action upon those. There are many heroes that you can kill at level 6 with a playmaking mid, but there are also many heroes that you couldn't kill, but they made a misplay and a window of opportunity arose. For example, if you outplay the opposing mid and reach 6 first, there's a good chance a kill can be made, even if the matchup was unfavorable before. However, there are many scenarios where it looks like it's a free kill lane, but in reality, you're better off not risking it. Kill enemy invoker once, you reach 6, you wear him down, you try to die for a kill. False sense of security, as invoker has many tools to disengage, and you die. Another very important aspect to consider is how your side lanes went. If any of the enemy supports feel like they are free to roam, then that's what they will do. You know Zeus is a free kill, Zeus knows he's a free kill, but the enemy Shadow Shaman has no problem just sitting near mid in case you dive, securing him ruins in the process. Just because you were able to kill a mid laner once or twice doesn't mean that you can do it again. Always consider current state of the game and be mindful of rotations. If you can't make plays in the mid lane, try making plays in the side. And this concludes today's topic. Thank you for watching, good luck! Thanks for playing Dota 2. Double kill.